Big Mama's house. Big Mama's house. Welcome to Big Mama's house. Big Mama's house. Yeah. Big Mama's house. Welcome to Big Mama's house. Big Mama's house. Welcome back to Big Mama's House, y'all. Mama and Papa here with you again to talk about Welcome to Plathville, Season 5, Episode 7, the one that just got and, over. And hello, y'all. Just uh, just got over, yeah. yeah. And actually, the, the season previews. I, they we're look, not going to talk about it. Oh, what it looks good. It looks good coming up. But yeah, I don't this discuss episode spoilers is a, yeah. the things, like the upcoming things, because... You know, I'm not going to give away everything. Well, plus they make okay, it and it'll eventually happen anyway. Plus they make it look worse than what it usually. Is. Oh yeah, they always hype it up to some way or another yeah. when it's nothing. So you just never know what to expect with their spoiler yeah, I previews. Think what you're expecting is going to happen. Yeah, I think that's pretty evident based on some of the things I've seen on Reddit. But that's all speculation. In this episode too. You know. This episode. But again, episode. we're not going to talk about. Well, I'm saying this episode was kind of interesting at the end. Yes, and but again, we don't talk about the. No, I know. Pre the future thing. We're talking about the about here and now. We're talking about nothing. Because, again, you can't trust what they show us. Exactly. You know? Mm -hmm. So, I don't... And TLC's tricky like that. So, I don't trust them. And I'm with you. We're just going to know what we know. I mean, we're just going to uh, go over this episode today. Welcome, guys. Welcome, Each welcome. and every one of you, we thank you personally for being here with us. Um, we really hope you enjoyed this. I wrote as fast as I possibly could to get could to get it all down. So I hope you enjoy it. So it's really weird. We open with Olivia bartending for extra money and to meet people. And I don't she, understand what she means by meet people. She's shadowing a real bartender, and like, but she said that um, she'd been studying bartending for the last year. And then she kind of got away from it with everything else going on and that two month vacation, you know. Um, so, but when she was there and that, she, she didn't even know how to like do a tap beer. Yeah, she didn't. Yeah, I mean, when you, you, know, you tilt it. <clears throat> yeah, you don't want to yeah. get the, the head on the foam. Every, everybody should know that. I mean, if you're drinking beer, you know that. If you've ever been to a bar. If you've ever been to a bar or if you ever drank a beer out of a keg. Right. You know that. Well, I don't think these guys are keggers. So, oh, well, I don't think Olivia's a drinker, no. I don't think they've ever been to a kegger, so no. do they even know what a keg looks like? Probably not. She might now. But I'm just Be saying, honest. it's, yeah, but I'm like, and it's really funny because last, you know, was it episode one where we found out that Mariah's bartending and that's what she's doing. She gets a lot of money, I think, on um, TikTok and stuff. Yeah. Very popular with her mixing drinks and things. So it's very odd that all of a sudden, out of nowhere, because Olivia likes to tell us every single thing about every little detail of her life, but we've never heard a single word about this bartending nonsense. Until tonight. But all of a sudden, she's shadowing a real bartender. And this chick knows nothing. No. I, I wouldn't ask. I wouldn't let her pour a glass of water. Did you see that one customer that was in the bar? The face he made? Yeah. He yeah. was just like, what is she doing? Yeah, yeah. It's like, you're wasting half the beer. Right? It's, it's crazy. It's just. There goes all the waste. Right I think it was a bit for the show. I really do. Probably. Because it's wintertime in Minnesota. There ain't shit to do. So, hmm, what can we do to have Liddy or have Olivia doing something for the show? Yeah. Um, but she said that she's changed since they got married and it has widened the divide between her and Ethan. So she's changed and widened the divide. Yeah. Which means the change isn't good for her marriage. Exactly. Yes. And we all know, we all see it coming. I mean, there's big old red writing on the wall. Yep. You know, with the D I V O R C E. Um, and it's just the whole thing is just janky. You know, the whole first thing there. Yeah, I don't like the first five minutes. You know, and in fact, on TLC, I think you only see what 20, 30 minutes of a show, if that, and the rest is commercials. I mean, yeah, that and bothers me. The problem is that Olivia talks really fucking fast. Mm -hmm. Okay, and in the space of what normal person in 10 seconds would say 10 words or yeah. so, okay, she can fit about 40 into 10 seconds. And so keeping up with her is hard, what's hard for me keeping up with the show for yeah. a lot of the time. Um, then we get to go off with Kim and Isaac, not the farm. 
I like and they're part. talking all about what needs to be done because they want to turn it into a wedding venue. So they got to like do all the trimming and whatever. And then she talks to him on his own, one on one, respectfully, tells him about dating Ken. Yeah. And how does he feel? Well, he's I mean, the first thing she said after telling him what happened was, How do you feel about that? He's awkward at first. Well, and he even said he's sad and it was awkward. He doesn't know what to say. Um, and but I think he liked that she told him first. I mean, well, very first, but of all the kids, he was the first. And she said, "Well, you're the one that introduced us." Yeah, you know, you're the reason why we've had this ongoing relationship. As you know, the platonic one first. You know, um. So I I think that was really good that she you know respected him as an individual and wanted to make sure it was okay with him first. And he didn't do it in front. She didn't do it in front of everybody. You know, she didn't put it on social media. No. Nope. She went to him one on one and had a private. I mean, not how, how private can out. you be with cameras around? That's how but, it out, but by his mom, not by anybody else, which was nice. Exactly. Exactly. Uh, the fact that he suspected it. Yeah, that was interesting. Yeah. Yeah, it was really interesting, and I, I was like, unless maybe, maybe did Barry did tell him and said we don't know nothing. No, I I don't know. I think maybe he's not stupid, and he's all about girls. He knows how guys act around girls that like, you know. Yeah. He thinks he knows girl. Right. Yeah. But then he Isaac asked if Barry knows, and she said he does. But whenever she told him that he didn't really have a reaction, um, even though she had told him several times over a couple of months that she wanted to date other people and just to see, you know, what's out there. Yeah. And he never even acknowledged it before, but whenever she went and told him that he, she was dating, <gasps> he didn't believe it. Shocker! He, he never heard of it before. He didn't believe that she was going to do it, and then he didn't believe right? she would find anybody. I think maybe that's more of the situation. That she would find anybody? That she, that she wouldn't find anybody. Yeah. And then she would just come, come crawling back. back. Barry. Yeah. Yep. So um, I don't think that would happen anyway. Even if she didn't find anybody, I don't think see her crawling back. No, there. I think she would rather be happy alone yeah. than yeah. miserable with him. Yeah. Um, and Kim says straight up, we will be happier apart. Yeah. I'm going to find someone and hopefully be ha hopefully find someone and be happier. Yeah. Hopefully your dad will find somebody and be happier. You know, he'll think that he, he'll think he'll look back at this and realize how much better he'll have it then. Yeah. You know? Um, and Isaac said that he kind of worried and he knows that some of the others are going to worry if it's too soon, but it's over a year, but no, that she'd only left him. No, she says it's been over a year. She said that. Oh, well, since the initial split. Since, yes. Yeah. 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 But the divorce isn't final yet. No, but it's been over a year as far as yeah. the, the splitting up. But the good thing is Isaac said that despite the fact that he think it might be a little bit too soon, he was happy for his mom. And I don't think it's too soon. Um, but again, these, they, they never wanted to split in the first place. So like she said, another 24 years might yeah. be soon enough. Yeah. And, uh, Kim was very careful to say that she has to be careful, but with the other kids, um, and how she tells them and all that, but it needs to be soon. Yeah. But each one is an individual and they all each have their own personality, their own values and feelings and thoughts and opinions so it i don't think telling them as a group is ever a good idea when you have that many age ranges yeah and you, you should tell the three youngest ones separately and tell them tell them Nick, together then you talk you can talk to isaac and lydia together and even mike and mariah yeah. but you should not have all the big kids and all the little kids and the same conversation all the time not all nine kids it's not, not everything is something for the little kids to be in on, in my mom opinion. Um, and she's like, I haven't dated in 25 years, you she's know. Clinton's been in office. Yeah, she's like, I don't know what I'm doing. I'm scared to death, you know, but it's, you know, it's it's a good fear, you know. Well, now Ethan and Olivia, they, we know that they're living in Victoria, Minnesota. Shout out to Victoria. <laughs> um, and they're decorating a little apartment for Christmas. And then Lydia Grace and her boyfriend, CJ, are going to be coming over to visit. Um, and, you know, he talks about how her parents um, don't approve of anybody who's different. Uh, yeah, well, they have to call them friends. Yeah, you're not dating, not dating because, because, yeah, you're friends. Yeah. And 
when they insisted that they were more than friends, that didn't turn out well. No. Nope. Um, and e Ethan always felt but bad for Olivia because she didn't have any family in her life, really. And um, so he's really glad that now she's got, I'm going to say her Lydia instead yeah. of our Yeah, her Lydia. Her yeah. Sister Lydia. Um, and he hopes that, it gives him kind of hope that Mike and Mariah, everybody will come around and it'll work out for them. I'm sure they will eventually. I think so. I mean, again, they're all very loving kids. They're not mean, spiteful kids. No. They're, you know, they might take them a minute to calm down and get over things and sort through it in their mind. But, you know, they're going to forgive their, their older brother. They love him. He's like a hero figure to all of them. Yeah, he just needs to get rid of the baggage. Yeah. Um... So when they're they have their company, they Ethan and Olivia want to play two truths and a lie, <laughs> and we fucking find out something that I never needed to know is that Ethan won't do butt play, but Olivia wants to. Yeah, we didn't need to know that. Well, if I didn't know it, so do all of you. I'm just saying I can't have that knowledge all to myself. Well, seen a show, we can be yeah. we can be like in a support group together. It'll be okay. Find me on Reddit or Facebook or any other places. Yeah, Olivia seems kind of freaky in some areas. I'm telling you, man, I see, I see, I see her legit becoming a stripper. Well, yeah, I mean, she loved that that you know, and stripper. she, you know, she likes the attention. Stripper pole. She, you know, I mean, I think maybe she could make a good money as a stripper. And I'm not saying anything bad against strippers. No, no, no. If no. you're doing it as a living and not as a like. To support like a drug habit or being used as a prostitute or something, I got no problem with it. Yeah, if you're not your stereotypical stripper. Yeah, if you're just a, a regular nine to five stripper, you go to work, you do your thing, and you I, come home. You mean nine p to five a, obviously, because I don't think you can win nine eight. You are not. I don't mean literally nine to five. I just mean you go do your time on the stage and then you come home. Yeah. You don't. Yeah. Do tricks and hand jobs and all that other shit on the side. Because that is just to mean anybody who has is forced to do those things. That could be a bonus for him. No, stop. That makes me sad. Um, sorry, I, it kind of distracted me, you guys. Um, what why, did, why did why, they should have cut that part out for the show? TLC is a favorite. They no, they love change. anything a little bit salacious. If it's anything sexual related, TLC pounces on that shit. Well, they love it. It is on ten o'clock Eastern time. So, I mean, I guess they get away with it. I guess. I don't know. But then um, Kim and Ken, it's really awkward to say Kim and Ken, yeah. um, go to dinner. And Ken says he's more quiet and Kim's more outspoken. They're kind of a yin and yang. Um, it's kind of like you and me. You're more of the quiet one. Anymore. Like, I used to. didn't used to be. And I was the bossy, outspoken one. And I'm still that way. <laughs> well, we're, both, we're both kind of quiet now, but... But, I mean, if something isn't right, I'm not just going to sit there and take it. You know I me. Mean? I'm going to stand up and say, you know, bullshit, this is wrong. Yeah. You know? Um, and he, she says that he cares how she's feeling, and she feels heard all the time. And Ken said he thinks very, very highly of Isaac, and he was afraid of hurting him. Yeah. And he was glad that he knew now and that he was okay with it. Which I think is a great, like, he's got kids, I know. Um. He hasn't talked about anything like that on the show because they're older, probably and don't want anything to do with it. He them. looks kind of a little older than Kim. Yeah, I think I'm not. I don't know that off the top of my head. When we get more I'm into saying that, he looks older. I'm next few episodes, we'll go more into that. I'm um, doing the eye test. Yeah, no, I, I'm with you. Yeah, he looks a little rough. <laughs> He's been. I'm not saying that. I'm saying old. I'm just gonna say Seasoned. He hasn't been well loved. Season. Do you know when you like go on somewhere that you get these ads for furniture and it says well loved? Yeah. Well, this he he was road hard and put away wet. He was not well loved. You know. So he, he was a used couch. Yeah. So <laughs> I don't literally mean he's a used couch. Um. Oh my goodness. But don't bring in new God, couch don't make for me example. In the middle of the show because it won't stop and you know it won't stop. Um. So, the, the, have you distracted? What are you doing to me? Um, so, then Kim wants to know if she, what he considers her. Basically, he's, she's like, so, are you my boyfriend? Yeah, this is where my Roku went out. Oh, okay. no. And so, you had to, did you miss it? Well, are you, have, you have put notes. You have notes. So you can, I did. You can tell us all what he said. Yeah. And so, um, he, he was like, definitely. And I thought that was so cute. I was like. Oh. I mean, I seen the pause. It was like a five-minute pause. 
yeah for dramatic effect right exactly right? so i'm sure he answered right away Oh yeah, but, I'm sure. Yeah. They just, I think they just hit pause and they just hit replay for the same couple looks back just, and forth. They just get a random picture of them sitting there. Right. And that's what they There's, edited in. Yeah, their editors are yeah. awful. Yeah. Um but uh I think it was cute when he said definitely you're my girlfriend, you know. And um he just wants to make sure everyone is okay with it. And again, you can tell he's a dad and he cares about the kids. It's well, not he cares just about Isaac. That's well, true. no, and he said he wants to make sure everyone's okay with it, you know, because um, he, he's got an ex, he, she's got an ex, you don't need nobody to turn up drama, he just no. wants everybody, you know, be chill and be okay with it. I see drama, that's my prediction, I don't know anything. Well, it's a reality show, so I, I could I I see, give you the odds. I see drama when Barry and Ken are in the same room, I do see drama, uh, well, from we, Barry's end. Well, but you also want little previews, so it's coloring your thinking now, and that's why I hate those little freaking previews. Because no, it's gonna happen. That that's what would happen. Well, okay, we and I have been together for twenty years and raised two kids together, yeah. and we had constant tension with the ex. And no matter how badly, every single minute of every single day for almost twenty years, you wanted to beat his ass. Have you ever done it? I have never done it because it was never really in the same room. Exactly. I mean, that was intentional. <laughs> I want. I've never been in a fight in my life. I wouldn't. I wouldn't start now. But I also know. Your strength, and I know you, and I know that you would probably really, really hurt someone if you hit them. Well, I did put somebody through a table already, so I mean, I'm... Well, so that, that. well that wasn't a fist fight, though, so that doesn't count. Okay. <laughs> anyway, back to the show. Well, I don't even know how we get on these tangents. Anyway. I was just saying, I think Barry would confront... Can I don't say physically. But confront him, why? But he would stand there with that... He left him a year ago. He was standing with that smirk on his face like he did with Ethan. Yeah... With the cameras rolling. But Ken, I think, is very laid back. And so I don't even think that... And I don't think he's like that, oh, I'm the macho guy and I'm going to, like, get buffer than you. This dude looks like he hasn't got off his couch in about the last eight years, okay? He's not going to have any bodybuilding competitions with fucking Barry. And Barry's got some bling bling going, too. Bling bling? Yeah, the necklaces on with some ice around his neck. Oh my! That I don't. I don't want to talk about that sentence at all. We're going to no, move on now. Did you not see him? I tried no really words. hard, and this is terrible to say. Do you close your eyes when Barry's on? I try really hard not to actually look at him. Why? Because he gives me the fucking creeps, man. He looks. He just gives me a weird fucking vibe, and you know how Did I you am. Haircut. What hair? Does he need to like shave it all off and just go completely bald? Oh, I think that would be worse. Some people look great bald, like the you. Poor guy. Not he can't win. No, he the just needs to get some plugs or something. Has no chance. What you're saying from not looking creepy. Part of it's the fucking look on his face and that creepy way he stares at himself in the mirror when he's lifting weights, which what? we talked about in the last episode. And I am sorry, he gives me the willies. He didn't do that this episode. That was I just said it was last episode. I know he didn't do that this episode. No, but it's get fucking. Creepo, man. Anyway, where are we at on notes? Sorry, guys. I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. So, Barry, whenever she told him that uh, she was dating, he was shocked. He's angry, sad, feels all alone. But again, to told the second episode, he told us he chose not to have depression. He didn't go down that road. He didn't choose to do it. Good for him. I don't know if there's a, if you can choose or not to choose, but anyway. But, yeah, he still has issues not being angry at him. Like, all those millions of people that have mental illness. They're like, yeah, Barry, like, okay. Like, we can help if we have depression. Good try, Barry. Right? But he says that faith got him through it all quickly. Did you see that part? I think so. He was sitting there talking. I was probably getting popcorn or something. Maybe. I rely on your notes. But he hopes that she finds what she's looking for. And I think she did for right now. Exactly. I don't know if she's going to marry Ken and be with Ken forever. But yeah. she's happy now. So. Well, exactly. I mean, and that's dating, isn't it? You date until you find the right one. Um. So then we're with Micah in, in L.A. And they're, he's going snowboarding for Christmas. And he's on a Zoom call or something with Mariah, and she got more tattoos. Um, and she says that her leash was up at the end of August. And she with didn't Ethan. owe him in September, yeah. Yeah, and she was not there in September, so she did not owe him any rent. 
And the fact that he only wanted her to stay another week or two so that she lived there in September and would have to pay is bullshit of her, her of him as a brother. Especially since they hijacked her trip to Tampa anyway. Right? I mean, it's crazy the way they just insert themselves and act like it was their idea. Well, he's going to wake up eventually. So he's been bitching that she owes him money and she's saying, no, I do not. Here's my receipts. Yeah. And then Micah and Ethan talked whenever Micah was in Georgia, and it got heated, and Ethan left. But then uh, talking about everything from the first email that uh, Olivia made to their response to the whole music-stealing, money-stealing thing and the pictures of Olivia's and yeah. all that horrible mess, you know. And um, so they got in a fight, and uh, but but Ethan called later and apologized, which was very nice. At least he's not at least he's not that mean to his brother. Well, like he, unforgiving like he is to his sister. Well, you heard what she said about them when they were kids, right? About what Ethan did to her when they were kids, and never didn't get along very much, and and this is when her uh, her like depression, her mental illnesses start started. I guess you can say, yeah, when he was bullying her. When Ethan was bullying her when they were kids. You didn't see that? When did she say that? She said it on a Zoom call. Oh. I might have been distracted by a cat and two dogs in the bed that were super cute and sleepy. And just had to have pets. So I may have missed a sentence or two. I apologize. But Please was, don't and, fire me as your favorite podcast. That, that wasn't that was important though. I, I, I'm glad you saw it. I'm glad you saw something in this episode and not just relying on my notes. <laughs> See, I was just seeing if you were paying attention. That's good. what it was. Good job. Yeah, okay. Good job, baby. Tell us more about it. That's all I know. Move on. Oh, okay. Good times. Um, And Micah said he's not going to work on the relationship with Ethan unless Ethan does too. And good for him. Because you he cannot said, continue yeah. to be the one to give and give and go to that person, go to that person, and yeah. go to that person. And he said and, that too. Yeah, you can't you can't have a, a relationship like that. Yep. And Mariah said that she was very sorry for the reaction that she had about the music. She was really afraid of you know that her music was gone and she freaked out. And anybody could do a, that. She shouldn't apologize for that because that was stolen from her. Well, no, evidently something got resolved with that too <clears throat> behind the scenes that they haven't talked about. Something about she gave her phone, showed her where to get access to her music and shit privately. Oh. You know, of course, all this shit happens behind the scenes, all the good stuff. Yeah. Um, And then we know that Mariah has not spoken to Ethan in three months or more, and yeah. she still hasn't blocked, so she, he couldn't apologize or try to do anything if he wanted to. And I think she's okay with it right now, because I think she's still really pissed off and hurt. Or she he doesn't have a chance to yell at her someone. So it's, and that was the big thing. She blocked him because all he was doing was yelling and cussing at her. Yeah, and making demands like he and Olivia are want to do. Yep. Um, and Micah said that he realized that it is not his job to fix stuff. Yep. Everybody's gonna have their problem. Only ones he's got to fix are the ones that are involved him personally. And if everybody on the planet would get that. Oh well, yeah, if they just the world would be right. so much better place. Nobody cares about who, what junk they got under their clothes. They don't care what people are doing in their bedroom. They don't care who's marrying who. They don't. When Mike is forty, we're voting for him for president. He's so far the most logical and level-headed yep. I've seen yep. of anybody. Um, but then um, we're back with Ethan and Olivia and Lydia, Grace, and CJ, and they're gonna they're driving somewhere to go sledding. This is the part. Because there's the lots of snow there. You know and it's very, very cold. You know what's funny? Yeah. Is that when I came back from a commercial, Olivia's like, Lydia and what's the guy's name? CJ. CJ came at the wrong time. This is the coldest time of year. It's Christmas. And of I, course I, it is. It's Minnesota. It's right? not like it's Tampa. You right. Know, will, you, will you have a coldest time of year? You, you have like six or seven months of cold weather, if not more, in Minnesota. Well, I mean, and even when you live in the Midwest, say you live in um, Michigan, Michigan, Indiana, Illinois, Missouri, Kansas, um, all those like the middle states, you know. But they don't get as much as Minnesota. Exactly. I'm going to say here in the Midwest, we get some decent snow sometimes, yeah. more, more ice here. But hey, 
But um, we can but say the, you go even two hours north, and it's a different story between ice and snow. And the farther north you go, the more you get. And that's just common sense. And she's when she said, "I'm like, oh, you, you can't pour beer, and you you have no idea." No geog- common sense. No geography either. To me, that's knowing, common. Knowing that know Minnesota, that. all right, is one of the snowiest states in the country. Right. Um. Oh, sorry. Yeah. I've been waiting to get that off. Especially because you know that Ethan had to have told her about it. Yeah. Because they go there for Christmas. And then she bundles up like she's a bug on a rug. It's like, how are you going to move? Yeah. and But we found, like you said, Eth- Olivia does not like the cold and snow. But she said, it's only for a year. I can do I can do it for a year. And then Ethan's face, mm-hmm. because we know from last episode, he wants to stay there longer. That's like, he's in heaven right now. Yeah. And she even said, he loves it here. Um, and so she's willing to deal with it because he's happy. Well, but what happens when that year is up? Another fucking argument. Well, it's gonna, I think it's going to happen before that. But anyway. Well, I'm just saying, let's just say they, they work it out again. And they end up trying to move again well, in a year. Years, and they've argued this much in four years. It's ridiculous. It's crazy. All this space. Um, and then Ethan, they were almost where they were going sledding. And then Ethan decided it looked really fun. He said he found a spot. Evidently, he knows it's flat and even to do donuts in the snow in the car. Not like a car, but like a little SUV thing, right? Mm -hmm. And then, of course, Olivia freaked out, and she was demanding to be let out. And I don't know if he didn't hear her over his own woohoos, you know? Or he just didn't care. And, or, again, maybe he just was like, oh, she's just being her typical drama self, whatever. That's what I meant. But, I mean, you know, I was in a really bad car wreck. Right after you and I first, yeah, you know, it was, was about, yeah, it was only within six months or so of us meeting. Yeah. And yeah, I mean, I, I was very close. I could have been dead. And um, so I have some PTSD fr- from that no, still. No, on my right foot. It, it, yeah. Anyway. And so I get where she's coming from because I've had to tell you several times about the one thing in the car that makes me freak out. And you continue to do it for like What's 20 that? It was when when you like get right up on somebody and then oh yeah because you know when somebody slows anyway, down and you don't know, slow down anything you ask the people you, they heard you ask well I didn't don't I, gaslight I mean, me I'm not um I'm just joking Olivia shut up be shut up Ethan just fuck off I don't want to talk about it right now don't gaslight me sorry that was what she actually said at the end there um. Um, and she said that she's been in several serious car wrecks. Were they? Was she all driving in all of them? I have no idea. If so, I, I don't take think, her license away. And I think Ethan would probably be the most safest driver to have in those situations. Yeah, he's the most mechanical and exactly. methodical minded. And he knows which way to turn. To go exactly. To the slide and all that stuff. So. And it did look like fun. Yeah, it did look like fun. Yeah. Um. I mean, when you know what's coming, it's fun. So, but then it was awkward for Lydia, Grace, and CJ. And um, they said, like, we you know, we understand why she's upset, but we also see that Ethan was just wanted to have fun. Yeah, and he wasn't actually, you know, he wasn't actually doing fast. We're and doing fast. Ethan has no fucking clue why she is so upset. Not he is literally like. I really don't get why you're so freaking upset. Like, but again, when she says she is communicating, mm-hmm. she doesn't really say much. She says a lot of words but nothing, really no, fast, no, no but meaning. no fucking meaning. It's all four years are married. Yeah. How could he not know that she's been in car accidents? Do they never talk? I that is the question. That is the question of the show. You know, it shouldn't be, be called Welcome to Plathville. It should be, why don't any motherfuckers communicate? Yeah, especially Ethan and Olivia. As a married couple, you would think so. Because you know all the accents I've been in. Yep. You know, I know the accents you've been in. Yep. Okay. And I don't understand why Ethan doesn't know the accents Olivia. Well, been. maybe he just can't grasp the concept of PTSD or something. I don't know. Um, the fact that she's always bitching and moaning. Exactly. And so maybe it's just get got drowned out with the crowd kind of not thing. Yeah. But here's the thing. At the end, they just put their anger aside, each other aside, and just went sledding and had fun yeah. with her sister and her boyfriend. I cannot put anger aside like that. You if see. I am angry, 
I'm fucking angry until I'm calmed down enough to not be fucking angry anymore. Did you see Ethan ran her over at the end down there? Oh, that's... He I, went between the legs, and she she went face first in the snow. That's amazing. And then they, they went to... I wish they had left her there. Yeah, they went to the conversation. But I can't put anger aside like that. Like, how do you go from, oh, my God, I want to divorce you, to, okay, guys, let's have some one fighting. I'm sure they turn the tapes off for a little while, and Ethan and Olivia were having their, their squabble. And then CJ and Lydia are like, oh, my God, why'd I come? Right. You know? Awkward. Because it, it would be awkward to be with a couple like that. Yeah. Well, my gosh, there's a lot. And if you guys did watch and you did see all the previews are upcoming for the next yeah. rest of the season, oh, my dear baby I Jesus. It's going to be a break between because they don't usually do that unless there's a break coming up. Like No, they always do. No, they say next. You know, yeah, next but, one, not, not the coming up in the season. Oh, well, maybe on Plathville, but I know TLC does that a lot with their other shows. So I guess maybe I just didn't notice it being that big of a deal. Next time on, then mm -hmm. next week, and they go coming up in the season. So I, that was weird. I, they better not. I'll be so freaking mad. That'd be stupid. Why would you have a right? Because people get there's no attention it span. It doesn't work with other shows like The Walking Dead. Like I'll be surprised how many people they're even still listening right now. I mean, honest to God, <laughs> you know. But anyway, guys, I hope I cannot wait for the stuff coming up, and I cannot wait to share it with you and break it down with you guys so please reach out to us let us know what you're thinking we're on every platform big mama's house podcast yep um thank you all so much again for being with us we appreciate each and every one of you thank, thank you, you thank for every you. like thank you thank you for every subscribe because it's free 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 um and please leave us comments i love we look we we have one who's gonna be number two yeah, who's gonna be number two who's yeah. gonna be number two come on come on somebody you know you want to be number two come on you can do it one little and you know what? Be tight. And if you want to be rather be number three, well, you can't be number three unless there's number two. Exactly. Maybe they could race for. Really, it. nobody wants to be number two. I do if it just means being better than number three. Ha <laughs> ha. True. Okay. You know what I'm saying? Yep. And Competition minded, you and me, baby. Yep. All right, guys. You guys come back again and see us. Until next time, though. Please spay and neuter your pets. Subscribe. Please wear your seatbelt. Subscribe. Please use your turn signal. Don't be an asshole. Subscribe. And please, you guys, please be kind because everybody is going through something. And do not do donuts if somebody has PTSD in the passenger seat or the back seat. That too. Yes. All right. Until next time. Bye. Bye.